Amaratya N. So N began her spiritual work as a channeler and healer in the year 2005, soon after experiencing a powerful awakening in July 2004, catalyzed by the Venus transit. Since then, she has worked with a wide spectrum of spiritual energies and highly evolved beings, including the Elohim, Archangels, Ascended Masters, Christed Star Beings, and various councils of light to transmit high frequency sound and light codes, also called the languages of light, and advance spiritual knowledge to support the evolution of humanity. Anne was conferred the spiritual name Amaratya by one of her spirit guides, Lord Buddha, in December 2012. The name means of the Emerald Diamond. The intention is for her in fulfilling her role as a channel for spirit to bring through spiritual knowledge calibrated with the highest frequency of love, Emerald Heart, and of absolute purity and clarity, Diamond. In the last decade or so, Anne has channeled numerous workshops, courses, and group learning events and shared them across different parts of the world. More information on Anne and her vast collection of channeled material is available at the LF Center of Accelerated Spiritual Transformation, or ACAST for short. And today her topic is Becoming a Greater Consciousness. So over to you, Anne. Nefli, thank you very much for the very elaborate introduction of myself. Um, so yes, Amaratya is how I'm known when I'm working, such as now, working meaning when I serve spirit as a messenger, as a light holder, as a transmitter of energies. Otherwise, when I'm out and going, um, an ordinary person, so I'm known as an end. So I'm very happy to be joining this start meet. Um, and when I first received the invitation for NEFNEET, I asked her to give me like a day or so to feel into the topic which Spirit would like us to, to get more familiar with. Without much ado, very quickly, this title came about becoming a greater consciousness, engaging in the game of evolution with ease and grace. So over the course of the one or two weeks, the information from spirit began to really descend into me. Henceforth, I've come prepared for this talk with uh, a few slides to serve as visual aids for everybody, uh, our dear audience, so that you may have hopefully a deeper impression of some of the concepts and some of the ideas which spirit and uh, all his vessels and embodiments would be talking with us about. A leaf center of accelerated spiritual transformation is a long, long name, you know, whole mouthful of words. In short, we are known as ACAST. So my partner Andy and I set up this um, virtual center in 2011. Initially, I was quite intrigued when my spirit guides requested that I use the word a leaf because it sounds quite new and strange to me. And after some research, I began to appreciate the intention and where they were coming from. A leaf is actually a letter, the first letter, in fact, in the Hebrew alphabet. In number terms, it means one. In essence, it is the intention of spirit and all my guides for our virtual center, ACAST, to serve as a, a vessel, a holding space, whereby people could connect with one another as potentially the divine man. By that we mean to say that within a leaf itself, it contains the potentiality of all that is, all that's of the beginning, all that's yet to come, all is now. And very importantly, it also connotes the need and the fact that regardless of how we spring forth in different forms, in different worlds out of one source of energy, let's say call it, let's call it spirit, we are always in eternally interconnected with each other. And how this is we going to be the divine man that we shall be. So I thought I'll just give a little introduction of why I leave, even though it is not really a culture uh, that I'm born into in this lifetime. 
Let me briefly mention about language of light. Um, so for members of our audience here who are say new to language of light, I thought I'd spend like a minute or so explaining what it is, at least to my perspective from an experience. Very briefly, to me as a channel, language of light is a string, a series, a program or programs of sounds that are coded with information. And what kind of information we're talking about here? These informations are making up of light, sound and geometric patterns, which together as well as individually carry carries and as well as embedded with divine or God's intelligence, we put it this way. So if you're sensitive to energy or frequencies, you might hear this language of light or you may feel them coming into your energy system as far as pulsating energy. For me as a vessel, as I mentioned, this language of light is given to me as a means of communication with higher beings. And quite often, after speaking through these series of language of light, then the, in the decryption, as in the translation into meaningful words, comprehensible messages will then come through. If you do not understand anything about it, even with the translation, it doesn't really matter. Maybe you just want to sit with the understanding that these sounds of coded information serves as highly functional catalysts for awakening memories of yourself as a soul, as a higher being, as well as in awakening all the gifts that are carried and remembered through your spiritual bodies. The Ascended Masters are the group of spiritual guides who are hosting this talk. As their channel, not just the topic was given to me by say different groups of guides, they are also here amongst us holding the space so that all of us who resonate with who they are as frequencies, as spiritual guides from the inner world, we become enclosed and embraced and helped by their collective aura. I work with several guides from different realms of the universe, as mentioned by Nephi earlier, and the Ascended Masters are among the first spiritual guides who led me into this journey of remembering remembering and becoming and hopefully able to share the eternal light that all of us are gifted and created with. By the name Ascended, it means that these beings of light or great masters have themselves walk the earth like us. But the difference between them and us is they were here much earlier than us in terms of earth time and they have since ascended the negative aspect of the ego or personality so as to become dwelling as light in the inner world. And some of these ascended masters may be returning to us when earth and humanity are ready to hold them and to, sub and to visibly connect with them as embodiments of light. And so here the ascended masters and say that we will love to return and to be seen as one of you However, we will need you to support our returning by first embracing, honoring, and allowing your own light to be flourishing. In this way, we, the beings from the higher world, and you, the beings from Earth, could then meet in the middle ground. This is an example of a language of light that basically carries a very warm, very heartfelt greeting from the Ascendant Masters. The rest of the presentation, which I have felt prepared for the audience, you could take them as distilled information that was downloaded to me um, prior to today, um, so that we can all be, can I say, in a space where we're focused with the help of the visual aids, along with the live transmission as they come through. Becoming a greater consciousness. So if you think and feel and even look at the word become, it actually comes or stems from the word be. So interestingly, the guides would like us to start thinking about be in order to explore the pathways 
and the avenues towards becoming. Imagine B as a seed. Any kind of seed you can think of, but I'll just use a picture and example of acorn here. So what is embedded in the seed is frequencies that are latent, energies that are dormant at the beginning. And the whole journey, if you like, all the, all the mission of the seed is to become more of itself than what it is realizing itself to be now. In other words, the purpose of B is so that whatever that is inherent as qualities and divine knowledge and potencies that are within the seed could find a way to express in more ways, in more facets and in more domains, the potentiality of the seed. Take for example of the acorn again. So the becoming of the acorn seed is perhaps this full grown acorn tree. So imagine instead of an acorn seed, you could have, say, a durian seed, which is quite uh, a well-liked fruit in Asia. Then you will have a different type of tree by the end of its uh, growth journey. The durian tree certainly look, looks not quite the same as an acorn tree. So each one of us has created out of the same consciousness called, say, spirit or God, we're all given with different blueprints, all right? And with these different blueprints, we come together to form uh, civilizations or species. And each species will in turn be unfolding into its own respective um, form in its fullest uh, potential. And this journey of be to become, we can know it as being, right? B-E-I-N-G. Seal is C, it has to be connected with the word of B, potentiality or the origin intention. And this process, we know it as evolution. So regardless of the blueprint that you are created with, whether you're an angel, whether you're a crested being, whether you're a crystal being, uh, whether you are the elementals, such as the fairies, etc., we have some kind of a seed within ourselves and the pathway that's given to us to evolve into becoming are different because it depends on the genetic codes that we were given with in terms of light, sound, and sacred geometries at the beginning of our creation. Anyhow, regardless of your blueprint, along the journey of evolution, all these different domains or facets of God will converge. And what is common across all different evolution paths is to converge to become a greater consciousness that display a higher level of divine intelligence and you will feel a greater need to express your own individuality known as, known as having a greater degrees of freedom. At the same time, while you are working with your own creativity and individuality, how then could you maintain the balance so that all that resonates with you together form a complex and higher order that reflects and become a greater expression of love <coughs> and unity. So this is the common, we say, journey across all different types of species and civilizations. Now, let us bring this generic concept of evolution to Earth, per se, or more to our level of understanding as humanity. So our guides here, Ascendant Masters, would like us to imagine this evolutionary path that's cut off for us, humanity, is a game. Right? In this way, maybe you'll bring out a greater level of lightness as you go through your everyday, or can we say, spiritual awakening experiences, be they joyful ones, be they those that uh, cause you to really want to tear your, heart, your hair apart. So whatever the case here, they would like to leave behind um, a roadmap in greater detail for us so that we could start to experience this evolution of ourselves with greater ease and grace. So they call this the game that we are in as the game of incarnation and reincarnation. And the rule of which is, interestingly, you are to forget who you really are and just so that you could remember along the way of evolution and your awakening. By this, we mean that 
not only do you forget each time you reincarnate into a new body back to earth, what you have achieved in your earlier incarnations, you also forget fundamentally that you are light. And so the whole game is about along the way, as you're fooled by your own dormant state, if I were, or unawakened state, how can you then in gather energies and frequencies and start to then remember that in the first place, you have opted to be wearing a human vessel is actually just to play this game. The strategy that's suggested for us by the guides would be then to cultivate a non-attachment to external phenomena and experiences. This is a key strategy is because when you forget what it means that effectively you pay all your attention and your, all your focus and your beliefs on the exterior of you, denoted by phenomenal experiences. And the more you're distracted in this way, the slower it may be, therefore, for you to remember the whole origin of yourself as light. And the whole purpose of coming back here is to regain light, that light and to express it. So strategy, cultivate non-attachment is key to anything, non-attachment to anything that's outside you. And the skill set towards working out this strategy is self-awareness. All right, and embrace and contain within skill set, we can go after trainings in these areas, meditation, breath work, and in general, we call it building your light bodies or subtle or spiritual bodies. And the reward of this roadmap, if it resonates with you, that is, is therefore a quicker evolution into greater consciousness. In other words, you gather speed. And along the way, as you gather speed and light and momentum, through your evolution, you become a lighter being and that accelerates you to become a full expression of what you're seated to become, maybe in this lifetime. As they promised, this talk comes with the energy tools as well as information so that we could begin to glide through our journey on earth rather than struggle through. And in the eyes of this and the ascended masters who are hosting the talk, to do so with ease and grace, we can think in terms of this ease and grace as coming through from two aspects or two necessary focus of our mind. One would be to cultivate and to maintain and adhere to disciplined spiritual practices. Discipline means something that um, becomes hopefully automatic in you, something that calls upon you to act on it, to become a daily routine. Um, such that you then become or incorporating spiritual practices that resonate with you automatically into your daily life. To become is to program yourself into these energies, activities that help you to become a greater awareness. And the other side of uh, the equation is what they call divine blessings, which means goodwill that can be endowed upon you by spirit but the spiritual guides, nice and pleasant and joyful and unbelievable coincidences, synchronicity opportunities. So these could also be light and high intelligence that is breathed through by spirit in order to encourage you to work on disciplining yourself into the spiritual practices. So in essence, these two prongs are interconnected. The more you devote energy and your effort into cultivating spiritual a spiritual life, the more opportunity you will have in receiving these divine blessings. For the purpose of today's talk, the spiritual masters would like to show us and share with us one of these spiritual practices by way of a meditation, which they call it chakra rebalancing meditation. In actual fact, this meditation was um, transmitted to me um, a few months back, but the ascended masters feel that the, the protocol of it or the procedure that, in, that is involved in this meditation is generic enough to be shared with a wider audience. And after all, chakra is one of the fundamental bodies that we need to develop, if not the most important one, in order for us to hold the balance 
to be divine at the same time to be man. On the other side of the offerings from the Ascended Masters in terms of divine blessings will be, I believe, showers of golden light coming through from the Ascended Masters in order to help us release, transcend and neutralize what could be residual as karmic energies in our soul memory. The intention of these offerings from them is so that they give us a kickstart into expanding our self-awareness. If you remember, this is the skill set that we are here to get better at or in fact to master in our lifetime. So this is like kicking us off this journey of becoming more disciplined in our spiritual practices, at the same time be more open and receptive to all good and God abundance that is possible and available from the universe. Before I walk through the steps with everybody, and just to give you the heads up, we will be practicing the meditation together. For now, I just want to run through the steps with you so that you begin to have some idea as to what the procedure may look like. So this is a diagram that shows in a very simple way the subtle body known as the etheric body that houses these seven chakras. So those of us who are not very familiar with chakras yet, just very quickly, these chakras are spinning wheels of light. So their job is to help us capture and bring through what is known as prana or universal life force in order for this life force to be fed into the physical bodies, including the emotional and lower mental bodies. So this is to ground us, if you like, so that we could experience our earth journey as if we are just physical. On the other side of the, of the calibration, these chakras serve as windows to deeper insights. So the clearer the chakras become, not only can they support the physical functionality of ourselves so that we can enjoy a more pleasant physical life, at least to have less illnesses and diseases to begin with. At the same time, they serve as opportunities within us to give us glimpses and in fact, full remembrance of our gifts. So for example, the crown chakra, which is seated right above us at the top here, it helps us to connect to spirit of any realm or all realms, if you like. So the gift of it is so that we get into the realm of spirit more easily by tuning in to its existence, the crown chakra here. At the same time, on a more physical functional level, the crown chakra takes care of prana that comes through the entire body to give it an overall wash down, if you like. So a very quick meditation could involve just imagining that you're breathing in pure golden light through the crown chakra. And as you bring it through the entire body and pushes it up across the lateral sides of the body, that is a very quick, but could be also effective way of maintaining the health of your physical body, as well as giving you the momentum to continue to explore the inner gifts and the insights that are to come through the other chakras. So I won't spend too much time talking about all the properties and the qualities of these individual chakras. I'm sure you can get info and uh, sufficient information from the internet on this idea of us carrying a fundamental body of light called the chakra system. This meditation of cleansing and recharging our chakras involve a priming stage, meaning to get into the state of working with these ascended masters. To do so, you can just simply ask. You can ask aloud or you can ask silently from your heart or in, from your mind. Ask for the presence of these ascended masters to surround you and to embrace you. Next, you will visualize yourself sitting on the lotus. Lotus, as you know, is a very common spiritual symbol, denoting uh, qualities of purity, 
um, genuity, connectivity to the light, etc. So imagine a lotus of any color of your choice and begin to have awareness across your body, giving attention to all the chakras that are within you. Wherever you pay attention to, the energy flows there. So in this way, you're beginning to warm up to the presence of your different chakras by visualizing them as well as honoring them with a gentle, loving touch. Next, we will first do the process of releasing negativity from each of these chakras in ascending order. Meaning to say, having your focus on the root chakra to begin with, you begin to spin light. Either you use hand to guide you through your imagination or you just use the power of the mind to imagine so. You move your breath in an anti-clockwise direction, starting from the root chakra to connect with the next upper chakra, the sacred chakra. Then you return your breath to the starting point, which is at the root chakra. Followed by repeating the same anti-clockwise visualization and movement of chi or prana from the root into the solar plexus and back to the root chakra. You go on doing this anti-clockwise visualization, the movement of chi, until you reach the uppermost chakra, the crown chakra. So this process is known as releasing the negativity that may be existing and holding you back in terms of enjoying greater health or awareness, generally speaking. And in general, in the science of energy healing, we give focus to anti-clockwise direction when we are wanting to release, transmute, and to surrender something that is perhaps not resonating or not aligned with our higher knowing. The last segment or second last segment of the meditation will be actually to do the reverse, it's recharging. So after you release all the negativity as much as they're present in chakras, you would like to replenish the empty spaces that since become available as a result of the release. So what do we use to replace them? We used the light from the ascended masters, which we call upon in step one. This time, to denote that you're bringing in and you're receiving light, we will spin the energy in a clockwise direction and also from the crown chakra downwards. So in a descending order across the how the chakras are lined up. So clockwise means I am receiving, I'm healing, I'm charging up myself. And starting from a crown, it means that I'm honoring the divinity in me. At the same time, ending at the root chakra means at the same, I'm also acknowledging my presence and my gift as a human vessel. So when this is completed, we then have to close the meditation. Ideally, you want to be giving thanks to the Ascended Masters for the empowerment. Effectively, when you give thanks to them, these higher beings from the inner world, you're giving thanks to yourself because all is one. So this is like an act of self-love in itself. And the last note to share is if you like this meditation, you can perform as regularly as you like and as long each time as your body desires. Which is now we're going to get started with practicing this meditation uh, one time so that your body could develop the body memory of it, uh, hopefully. I now invite you to get into stillness in any way you like. And one good way to bring your focus inward to connect with your stillness is perhaps to have your eyes closed at this moment. Continue to have the focus inward as you begin to acknowledge the space, the vastness within you. Either saying this aloud or saying it silently from your heart, ask for the ascended masters from the inner world to be with you now. As you begin to feel yourself as energy being connected with a larger energy, 
narrow your focus now to the chakras that are lined up within your body. As you do so, pay attention to this beautiful lotus that's beginning to emerge from the base of your body. Perhaps also paying attention to the color of this lotus that's gifted to you at this moment. We begin the process of releasing lower this lower order energies or negativity from each of our chakras. If you wish to, you can place your right hand upon the pubic bone or near about the area to denote a connectivity to your root chakra now. Be aware of the chi that is running through your body. And now let us move our focus or visualize an anti-clockwise spinning of energy from the root chakra to the sacral chakra. So as you breathe in and then breathe out, you're connecting the root and the sacral chakra as one consciousness. Next, move your hand or have your visualization now at your root chakra. And once again, move into anticlockwise to touch upon the solar plexus and then bring it back to your root chakra. Repeat the same anticlockwise movement of energy and focus, this time bringing it up higher even to where your heart chakra is and bring it down to the root chakra. Again, breathing in light from the root spinning across over to now your throat chakra and allow it to descend back to the root chakra. Bring in more and greater breath all the way up to your third eye chakra and let it just move through the cycle back to the root chakra. Lastly, take a deep breath in, bringing light and energy all the way up to touch upon your crown chakra before allowing the breath to descend back to your root chakra. Ikulaku siki hi sakaku tikalaka asalaka asi si 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 aka. Spend one or two moments now examining your inner state. Has anything changed or not after this round of chakra release of negativity? Now let us get ready to replenish energy and light into these chakras of ours. This time round, we shall focus on breathing in and out in a clockwise direction. As before, have your focus on your hand directing at your root chakra. Move the energy and light in a clockwise direction this time round. Move it all the way up to the crown chakra and let it dropping into the root chakra. Once again, move it up from root to your third eye now and back to root. Followed by ascending the light this time around to your throat chakra, letting it settle in the root. Once again, bringing it up, this time to your heart chakra, bring it down back to the root. Let's do it again, spinning it clockwise into your solar plexus, returning it to the root chakra. And last but not least, bring the light and the light force to your sacral chakra and then let it settle into your root chakra. Do you feel somewhat more empowered? energize and revitalize by now. In your own ways, I invite you to now give thanks to the loving presence of the Ascended Masters and also for the gift of this meditation practice. Thank you. 
So and thank you everyone for participating in this uh, group practice. Aku sikia saka uriaka. Next, we want to talk about divine blessings. And in the context of karma, right? So there could be many interpretations to the concept of karma. However, for now, karmic release here refers to letting go or surrendering or transcending any karmic memories that you might have brought with you upon your incarnation this time around, or it could be negative karmic imprints that you have somewhat created for yourselves, they're remaining quite active in your subconscious, in your energy field. So wherever they have come from or not, the Ascendant Masters are here to shower their golden light upon us. And they will serve as highly functional light and sound frequencies that begin to disrupt the otherwise stuck patterns that could be remembered in your neural programming in order that you stop maybe or having greater awareness as to certain behavioral patterns which are not reflective of yourself as divine love, as divine light. So coming release here is to give us a head start into scrambling up, scrambling up fixed programmings, which we have become so much associated with that we limit space for changes to set in in us as energy being. You don't have to do anything in order to receive this karmic release as energy transmission from the Ascended Masters. All I welcome you to do or all I request you to do is really to open your heart and feel into this love that is coming through from the energy transmission from all the Ascended Masters gathered around us at this moment. Ikusaki kula asaka. Open your heart to us now. We are the Ascended Masters. We are the beings from the higher worlds. Ikalaka, we are very much like you before. We have walked this journey hundreds of times, if not more. We are now getting the hang of how you guys are feeling down here. Yes, things may not be looking very bright at the moment, but fear no more. All you have to do is ask for help and we will come to you with blessings like this. Open your heart now and let us allow our light, our golden light of divinity to penetrate your heart and tear down all the programmings that are no longer serving you individually or collectively. We are the Ascended Masters. We encourage you to now to breathe deeply. Breathe into your essence. As you breathe deeper, you are allowing us to send even more energies of healing light towards you. Let us, not, not, let us not forget that there is a back gateway to your heart chakra. So if you like to receive in greater intensity this healing light from us, you might want to turn around your body like now so that the back of your body, your spinal column that is, would be interfacing more directly with this channel. Oh, 
tiki yi ka si 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 asaka ka. Yi ka si 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 asaka. All is good. All is in divine order. We are with you. Yi ka si 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 ka ya ka. So that was the energy transmission for karmic release coming from the ascended masters. You may turn around your body now if you had to uh, have your back facing the screen earlier. Iku siki sala kudiaka. So the energies that have come through from the guides might be felt as strong by your body. Um, if you're needing more time to ground yourself, one quick way to do so is actually to lie down. So the center gravity is uh, brought to a lower level. Aku siki isalu kiala kuriyasaka. So in the last 35 minutes or so, if whatever that we have shared with you or channel doesn't quite resonate or, or sit well with you at this moment, um, not to feel despair, a quick summary of all which the Ascendant Masters have really wanted to say is this, to become a greater consciousness could actually be as simple as being happy and light. So being means the journey of it, the evolution, a path that you have created, are creating yourself. As long as you can start paying notice to whether you are happy, whether you are light, that would itself be good enough as a yardstick, as a reflection as to you developing into greater awareness, you cultivating the skill set of awareness. But last and not least, Enjoy the game of evolution without attachments to what you may become or may not become. This concludes uh, my presentation for the summit. At whatever level that uh, appeals to you, we hope that the time that you spent with us and the Ascended Masters uh, has been fulfilling, rewarding for you. And once again, I give thanks to Pyramid Meditation for inviting me to this talk so that I could once again be serving as a messenger um, as Amaratya is meant to be. And over the years, I have been collecting um, similar presentations, but in snippets as well as live energy transmissions uh, from the guides. If you wish to have access to them, just visit our blog site. The address is given on the slide here. And the journal that you shall look for is called Pearls of Wisdom. This was named by the guides, by the way, which you will find hundreds of articles, meditation recordings, as well as energy activations. So I uh, encourage you to be part of a family of ACAS, meaning all of us coming together as a cast of unsought personality, each living out a script for the betterment of ourselves and mankind. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Anne. Thank you so much, I mean, for introducing us to the languages of light, for reminding us about the game of evolution, for taking us through uh, the meditation and for the divine blessings from the ascended mind. Pretty, if you have any final words to say, sir. Most wonderful talk, most wonderful guidance from all the ascended masters and this particular great master. Huh? I thoroughly enjoyed everything. Absolutely marvelous. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your attention. Thank you very much. We all owe Thank you, you, my pleasure. <laughs> it's a Thank privilege. You so Thank you so much.